Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Thursday in the, four, in the third week of Easter. Uh, it's still really windy out here, but uh, I think we got through the worst, and we're hoping for a nicer Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. So let's spend a little time together this morning thanking God for all the blessings that we have received, thanking God for each other, and asking God for his assistance to guide us through this storm that we're still in and that we continue to battle, but with God's help, with God's love, and with God's peace in our hearts, we know that he will be victorious for all of us. Good morning. Our opening song is number 398, Lead Me, Guide Me. Lead me, guide me along the way. For if you lead me, I cannot stray. Lord, let me walk each day with thee. Lead me, O Lord, lead me. I am weak and I need thy strength and power to help me over my weakest hour. Help me through the darkness thy face to see. Lead me, O Lord, lead me. Lead me, guide me along the way. For if you lead me, I cannot stray. Lord, let me walk each day with thee. Lead me, O Lord, lead me. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of God, our Father, the love of Jesus, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. And with your spirit. As we contemplate our scriptures today, we hear about the calling of people um, by the early apostles, especially the eunuch. But we also find Jesus praying for us who do call people, for we are his disciples, his personal witnesses in our own day of his presence, his love, and his mercy. So as we gather, let us call to mind our sins as we prepare to celebrate these sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault, therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, let us feel your compassion most readily during these days, so that those you have freed from the darkness of error may cling more firmly to the teachings of your truth. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. The angel of the Lord spoke to Philip, Get up and head south on the road that goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza, the desert route. So he got up and set out. Now there was an Ethiopian eunuch, a court official of Candace, that is, the queen of Ethiopians, in charge of her entire treasury, who had come to Jerusalem to worship and was returning home. Seated in his chariot, he was reading the prophet Isaiah. The spirit said to Philip, go and join up with that chariot. 
Philip ran up and heard him reading Isaiah, the prophet, and said, Do you understand what you are reading? He replied, How can I, unless someone instructs me? So he invited Philip to get in and sit with him. This was a scripture passage he was reading. Like a sheep, he was led to the slaughter. And as a lamb before its shearer is silent, so he opened not his mouth. In his humiliation, justice was denied him. Who will tell of his posterity? For his life is taken from the earth. Then the eunuch said to Philip in reply, I beg you, about whom is the prophet saying this? About himself? or someone else. Then Philip opened his mouth and, beginning with this scripture passage, he proclaimed Jesus to him. As they traveled along the road, they came to some water. And the eunuch said, Look, there is some water. What is to prevent my being baptized? Then he ordered the chariot to stop, and Philip and the eunuch both went down into the water, and he baptized him. When they came out of the water, the Spirit of the Lord snatched Philip away, and the eunuch saw him no more, but continued on his way rejoicing. Philip came to Azotus and went about proclaiming the good news to all the towns until he reached Caesarea. The word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be to God. Let all the earth cry out to God with joy. Let all the earth cry out to God with joy. Bless our God, you peoples, loudly his praise. He has given life to our souls and has not let our feet slip. Let all all the earth earth cry cry out out to God God with joy. Hear now, all you who fear God, while I declare what he has done for me. When I appeal to him in words, praise was on the tip of my tongue. Let Let all all the earth earth cry out out to God God with with joy. Blessed be God, who refused me not my prayer or his kindness. Let Let all all the the earth earth cry out to God with joy. Take and death, may the Lord be on your lips and in your heart, that you may proclaim the gospel worthily and well, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you, Father. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Alleluia. Alleluia, Alleluia. I am the living bread that came down from heaven, says the Lord. Whoever eats this bread will live forever. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to the crowds, No one can come to me unless the Father who sent me draw him, and I will raise him on the last day. It is written in the prophets, They shall all be taught by God. Everyone who listens to my Father and learns from him comes to me. Not that anyone has seen the Father except the one who is from God. He has seen the Father. Amen. Amen, I say to you, 
Whoever believes has eternal life. I am the bread of life. Your ancestors ate the manna in the desert, but they died. This is the bread that comes down from heaven, so that one may eat it and not die. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats this bread will live forever. And the bread that I will give is my flesh for the life of the world. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. All right, that singing thing really bothers me, but we have to deal with it. It's uh, an accusation of Catholics, and probably pretty accurate, that we are not Bible readers. I would say that I'm not the best Bible reader in the world as well. However, if you follow the daily Mass and you um, are at Sunday Mass and you would do it for three years, you would basically hear the entire Bible if you would attend Mass simply by listening to the readings. That would be your reading the Bible. This week we've had the sixth chapter of John as the gospel message. And to me, if there is nothing else in the Bible that you should read, it should be the sixth chapter of John. And especially starting with verse 22, which is called the Bread of Life Discourse. It is probably for us as Catholics what makes us different than our evangelical slash Protestant friends. It is where Jesus is saying, and he's coming right to that point right now in today's gospel, that you have to have his flesh and you have to drink his blood in order to have eternal life. And tomorrow and Saturday, as the sixth chapter goes on, the people who hear him say, this doesn't make any sense. He's lost his mind and we're going to take off because we used to follow him, but... We don't think he's sane anymore, so we're going to stop following him. And Jesus will ask Peter and the apostles, so what do you think? And they, Peter will respond, Lord, where else are we going to go? You have the words of everlasting life. But everybody else who was there that day left. My Protestant friends who I talk to and my evangelical friends we'll say that the sixth chapter of John, especially this Bread of Life discourse, is metaphorical. But yet when I talk to them about other parts of the Bible, they'll say everything is literal. To me, maybe I'm not that smart, but it doesn't make sense to me. How can virtually everything else in the Bible be literal, but this sixth chapter be metaphorical? If there's anything in the Bible that's literal. It's this sixth chapter of John. It's where Jesus is telling us in order to have eternal life, we have to eat his body. We have to drink his blood. We have to experience the Eucharist. It's what makes us different from everybody else. And it's what we're all missing so horribly right now is Jesus in the Eucharist because he says it right here. So, if you do have a Bible, and this is one my wife gave me about 20 years ago, and like I said, I'm not the best Bible reader, but I highlighted, I highlighted things in here that I thought were important. Well, look at, if I, I don't know if you can see this, but this is the sixth chapter of John. Oops, I lost something. I've highlighted almost the whole chapter because to me it's that important. So, if you have a chance and you don't read the Bible, Pull it out, dust it off, and go right to the sixth chapter. Read it carefully. Think about what's happening in that scene where Jesus is challenging all those people who are there with him to say, I think you've lost your mind. No, he hasn't. He didn't come back the next day. It doesn't say he came back the next day and said, you know what, I was just teasing. Come on back. No. No. They left. We are not going to leave. 
we know that what we receive is truly Jesus' body and blood. And those of us who are missing it so badly right now know that it's Jesus' body and blood. The sixth chapter of John assures us of that. We place our intentions before the Lord as we pray. We pray for Pope Francis and Bishop Ricken, for all bishops and priests, that they truly may proclaim the gospel anew and others may truly come to be enlivened by the Lord through his presence. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for the sick, especially the dying, that they might know the presence of Christ, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all of those who are affected by the coronavirus, those who care for them in various ways, um, especially their families and the medical personnel, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for those who find themselves, um, shall we say, at wit's end, because we are um, asked to remain separate from one another, that we truly may find ways to serve one another, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pause to add our own intentions in silence. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all of the people of Prince of Peace Parish who have gone before us in faith, desiring to be a part of the kingdom. And we pray for all of those uh, who um, have died, um, especially our loved ones. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Loving and gracious God, you have sent to us your son Jesus to be the proclaimer of the good news, the sharer of the Eucharist, and the hope of partaking in your mercy. Be with us always as we seek your kingdom. We ask our prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink, our bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the, w <coughs> the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Blessed 
Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, our Heavenly Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. O God, who by the wonderful exchange effected in this sacrifice have made us partakers of the one supreme Godhead, grant, we pray, that as we have come to know your truth, we may make it ours by our worthy way of life. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, but especially at this time, to acclaim you, O Lord, above all, to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. Through him, the children of light rise to eternal life, and the halls of the heavenly kingdom are thrown open to the faithful, for his death is our ransom from death and his rising to life for all because he has risen. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks, <coughs> excuse me, and giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church, spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope and David our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember all of our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray. That with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the blessed Apostles, St. Joseph, and all the saints who have pleased to be with you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen. 
At the Savior's command and form of divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with all of you. And with your spirit. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. For those of us who, when we read the sixth chapter of John, know that Jesus is the living bread that came down from heaven, an act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, Come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. Graciously be present to your people, we pray, O Lord, and lead those you have imbued with heavenly mysteries to pass from former ways to newness of life through Christ our Lord. Amen. Um, I don't have it. Well, I do have an announcement. Father will be here this evening at 6 p.m. Um, we're going to start having confessions on Thursday evenings, so he'll be here at 6 p.m. till 7 if longer, if there are people here. So if, you, uh, if that would be a more convenient time for you, please be here uh, t- tonight at 6 p.m. For, to experience the wonderful sacrament of reconciliation.
And tomorrow we will uh, have Holy Hour at 9 a.m. here. At, uh, we'll live stream that. I'm done. <laughs> Let us um, pray for our vocation directors who are given a daunting task to inspire and guide uh, our young men and women to uh, hopefully future vocations of priesthood, religious life, and diaconate as we pray. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. And we pray for these vocations from Prince of Peace Parish. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. And we pray together the prayer to St. Joseph. Good St. Joseph, as you led the Holy Family, watch over our families. Help our family and all families to know and share God's love. In our family relationships, may we find healing and seek to be holy. May our fathers help us to become faithful disciples of Jesus, who share our love for him. As foster father of Jesus, watch over all who serve as spiritual fathers. In a special way, bless our Holy Father, our bishop, and our priests. May they follow your humble example in their fatherly care for the people of God, your church. With Mary, you raised Jesus, the high priest. You know our need for priests. Please raise up good and holy priests from our families to serve the people of our diocese. May our children and grandchildren hear and say yes to the call of Jesus, just as you and Mary did. Good St. Joseph, pray for us. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. And our closing hymn again is Lead Me, Guide Me. Verse 2. Lead me, guide me along the way. For if you lead me, I cannot stray. Lord, let me walk each day with thee. Lead me, O Lord, lead me. Help me tread in the paths of righteousness. Be my aid when Satan and sin oppress. I am putting all my trust in thee. Lead me, O Lord, lead me. Lead me, guide me along the way. For if you lead me, I cannot stray. Lord, let me walk each day with thee. Lead me, O Lord, lead me.